بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وآله التيبين وأصحابه الغر الميامين الحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية سيد ومولاي علي بن أبي طالب اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وجهه الحمد لله الذي حدانا لحاذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا عن حدان الله أما بعد السلام عليكم and welcome to Future Stars Live on Adai TV I'm your host Hassan Shah and today we are talking about the importance of Salah and this will be part one of possibly three or two parts so before I continue, I'd like to introduce my guest. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Mispa. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Mohsen. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Hussain. And be before we continue, um, as we do on every show, Mispa is going to read the surah and Mohsen is going to read the translation. So can we start Mohsen off, uh, can we start Mispa off and Mohsen with the last salawat? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjul farajah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the Night of Power. What is the Night of Power? The Night of Be the Night of Power is, a be is better than a thousand months. The angel and the spirits descend the end by the permission of their Lord with all decrees. That night is peace until the rising of the dawn. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajim Thank you both in the misbah And remember whenever you are reading the surah make sure you read the translation of the world So you know the history behind it and also how you can implement it into your life So What's our topic today? The importance of Salah The importance of Salah So many people nowadays um, um, With Salah is a very um, uh, It's kind of how can you say like a really um, turning point for um, young people today isn't it yeah so many people um, um, they go to madrasa they go to mosque but the main thing that they need to implement in their life is salah they're learning about it and and they're doing all these things and the uh, one of the main things that they need to do uh, after learning all about it is um, go after your wajib to start doing how many how many times a day? Five. Five. Five, uh, five times a day that we, you have to do the salah. Yeah, because it only takes about two two um, two minutes, um, two minutes or three minutes max. Yeah. So, so these are the t times that um, that are not as much that you don't need in the day. These are only small amount. This is a small amount of time which you can take out of your day, can't you? Yeah, and um, we need to know the importance behind it. And also, people say um, that nowadays, because um, when did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam? When did he come? Came fourteen hundred years ago, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And people say, oh, now we don't need salah. We we remember Allah subhanahu wa taala. And um, uh, but this is a wrong way of thinking, isn't it? Yeah. We um, Allah has sent guidance for us and made us remember Him. Um, Remember him, him at important times, yeah, and these are through the Salah and by talking to him as well. And we're also going to be talking about the etiquette of Salah as well. So, most of you have got the first thing. So, can we start most enough with the last Salawat? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farjuhum. Then when you have finished the prayer, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala standing, sitting and recycling. But when you have but when you are secure, keep up you, the the prayer. Surely the prayer is timed law for the believers. Chapter four verse one hundred and three. Every day Muslims from all around the world turn their faces towards the Kaaba five times a day to pray to their Lord. 
in the morning before the sun rises they awake to to the supper prayer in the afternoon they pray to the the horror uh, as a supper finally in the evening after the sun has set they end off by praying the Mughal and Isha prayers from dawn to dusk the Muslim is constantly remembering his Lord through these prayers in Arabic these constantly remember in Arabic prayers are called Salah and Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has command, uh, commanded to the Muslim to perform them five times a day. Salah is, is one of the most important practices in Islam and is and in this lesson we will learn why why it's so important. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil fajr. Um, so thank you for that Mosin. And uh, what was Mosin speaking about there? He was saying that that in the morning there's the Fajr prayer and then um, then there's the Zohar and Asa and he's talking and, and he's talking like a bit of the point of starting of the importance of it. Yeah, starting of the point. So, so the first thing that he mentioned, what was it? What was the first bit that verse from, the verse from the Holy Quran? Yeah, yeah. and that talks about a little bit about um, Salah and um, standing up and shows that it's a type of remembrance for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the thing that is really important in our lives whenever whenever we doing bad things yeah the thing um, that we try to, to like kind of take away from our mind is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah so whenever someone doesn't have the um, the consciousness that 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 kind of the conscious that reminds themselves that they're being watched by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is watching them all the time they, um, they can fall into doing bad stuff can't they? yeah but if we have this conscious and um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us all the time yeah that we are being watched all the time that it will um, it will kind of deter us from doing these bad things because we know someone's watching us and Salah is one of the main things that kind of keeps keeps that strength that we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us and in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's hard for a person to um, kind of um, to commit a sin isn't it because you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you you remembering Allah in your mind oh I shouldn't do this that's what you're gonna think yeah so um thank you for that Mosin. so mr you've got the next thing so can we start mr off with a loud salwa allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad wa ajjil farjah one of the reasons the is so important is it is is because it is like a heavenly path that connects us to almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we stand to pray, we are standing in the presence of our Creator. We recognize that He is our Lord and the Lord of everything around us. So we pray to Him with humility and humbleness. Through Salah, our exhausted and restless hearts find peace and comfort. So we thank Allah for what He has given us and we ask Him to continue guiding us along the right path. Salah nourishes our souls just as food nourishes our bodies. It keeps us away from shameful deeds and without it, our souls will become weak and fragile. Salah has a social aspect as well, for when we pray in Jamaah congregation, we show the unity and brotherhood of all Muslims. It is because of, it's, it, it is because of these reasons that the Salah is so important, because it represents the heart of the Islamic message. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Thank you, Ms. Ba. So, um, Ms. Ba talking there a little bit about the importance, one of the importance of Salah, which was what, Ms. Ba? That, um, um, it's a what? Uh, it's the heart. It's, it's a the, path. It's a, a heavenly path. Yeah, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it helps us, um, um, get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is a really important thing as well what else did you mention there as well the what, what type of um, like Salah did you mention there um, Jama'ah yeah um, Jama'ah um, um, Jama'at yeah where everyone would stand together yeah and um, and have a, a, a like a, a unity 
with themselves, with all the people around them and they would all stand and one person is leading them and uh, this is a very beautiful sight to see isn't it, yeah, that they're praying all together and actually when you pray by yourself it's a really good thing, it's a really good thing, yeah, but when you're playing, praying in j Jamaat, yeah, when you're praying with um, a group of people and you've got this unity, this brotherhood with you, it it's even better than praying with by by yourself yeah so um this is why it's really important that you whenever there's um whenever it's salat time namaz yeah that you go to uh, that you go to mosque yeah and join um join people your community in doing um namaz salah yeah you um join together with other people and do this and this is really important uh, but also um there's a uh, salah that uh, b uh, some brothers in Islam they do, yeah, in um, in a jamaat, yeah, b in a congregation, which is um, not allowed. So I'm I'm going to tell you uh, about a few things which are um, which you are allowed to do uh, in jamaat. So all of the um, prayers that um, or that are wajib you uh, you do in you do in jamaat, you do in a congregation, yeah. Uh, uh, for funeral, you can do the um, funeral namaz. That's uh, in a congregation as well. But um, any uh, um, any um, like kind of uh, mustahab mustahab namaz, yeah, in a congregation in a jama in a mustahab namaz is not allowed. Yeah. So um, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajam He has said that um, pray uh, like you see me pray So this is one of the things that he said And he also said don't pray uh, a maghrib No, um, not a maghrib um, A mustahab salah in a jama in a congregation So we're not supposed to do any, any mustahab namaz in a congregation, yeah? So this is really important thing as well, and also the other important thing that I mentioned, pray. Um, the prophet said, "Pray how you see I prayed." Yeah. So um, th this is a really important thing as well, and w uh, if we have time, we'll um, in in what we're talking about in the importance of salah, we'll talk about how the prophet prayed and how the imams and how um, how the ahlul bayt has taught us to pray as well. Yeah. So we're gonna talk a, a little bit about that. I think um, in the next uh, next a few. Um, um, episode that we talk about the importance of salah. So, um, Hussein, you've got the next thing. So, I can start with saying after the last salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajan. So, if salah is this important, then what is it telling us? Well, for one reason, it is telling us that we cannot be careless about our salah. In the Holy Quran, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us so woe to the praying ones who are heedless of their prayers. In other words, we must take our salah seriously and treat it with much respect. After all, we are not just standing in front of anyone, we are standing in front of our Lord. The salah is like, living, is like a living being and if we don't treat it with respect, it will not treat us with respect on the Day of Judgment. Imam Jaffa As-Sadiq has said, whoever performed the uh, obligatory salah at the beginning of their times and observed their restrictions, the angel would raise them, white and pure, to heaven and the salah would say to the performer, may Allah preserve you as you preserved and entrusted me to a generous angel. But whoever performed them after their times with, with no excuse and did not observe their restrictions, the angel would raise them black and dark while the salah shouting at the performer, You have lost me, may Allah lose you, and may he not care for you as you did not care for me. Truly, this hadith is advising us on something very important. So, what? Uh, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajilfajr So thank you for that Hussain So Hussain mentioned a really important thing there didn't he? Yeah? yeah About how we are supposed to um, kind of treat Salah Yeah So He mentioned that 
you have to think salah as a, a living thing yeah and we have to treat it with the most utmost respect yeah okay. and we have to treat this salah in a way which this this thing is going to get us closer to Allah we're supposed to respect it or else on the day of judgment it's going to get its revenge back on you yeah because we, we speak about nowadays yeah whatever crime is committed in the lives uh, in today yeah if a crime is committed on you yeah um today in the in this world today yeah and it's not like kind of repay for you know forgive them or whatever something like that happened yeah on the day of judgment what will happen what will allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do he'll not forgive you and um so if a crime is committed on you and um nothing um and nothing was repaid to you or anything like that what would um, allah do on the day of judgment to the person who committed that crime he would punish them for the crime that they've committed in mm -hmm. it for what they've done in this world yeah because um, people think but when they've done a crime and they get away with it yeah oh that's me done yeah i i I'm, i've got, got away with this but uh, allah on the day of judgment he knows you've done this and he's going to sort you out on that day yeah so and same with salah yeah uh, like you saying said you got to treat it like a, a living thing and when you if you give it respect yeah then it will on the day of judgment it'll speak highly of you yeah say uh, and uh, and say things which oh he kept his salah yeah he he done he's he done his uh, mustahab prayers. He d he's done all this good stuff, yeah, and he's uh, established his salah. Yeah, he's done this, yeah, and he will praise you, yeah. But if you didn't establish your prayers, if you didn't remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and if you um, didn't respect it, yeah, on the day of judgment, what will happen? The salah will what? Disrespect you. Uh, yeah, it will it will say um, not highly of you. So this man did not establish prayer. He um, disrespected salah. Yeah, and Hussein actually mentioned something, a verse from the Quran. Yeah, and um, what did he mention there? Um, he, um, uh, it it will say that I, um, it will say um, uh, to the people like who have been like uh, not treated it with respect. Um, I say, uh, may Allah pu uh, punish you. I'm uh, not. May Allah treat you as you treated me. Yeah, um, th th that's well, that's what Hussein was talking about salah. So uh, the Quranic verse that was said there was talking about um, how um, how those who 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 do salah, those who do salah, and um, and don't respect it. Yeah. So those who do salah and don't do it in a proper way. Yeah. And just um, Allah Akbar, Alhamdulillah, and say it with no care, yeah, and um, and don't even use um, the uh, don't say it properly as well, yeah, yeah, and and um, uh, soon you you come up, uh, Allah Akbar, and you you you're, you're moving when you're not supposed to be moving, yeah, because um, one of the biggest mistakes that people do in the salah is um, whenever whenever they get up and when they're gonna go down they're still moving Allah Akbar do something like that uh, one important thing that we need to mention as well is when you're actually doing salah whenever you're speaking um, you shouldn't be moving yeah um, and whenever um, the only time do any of you know, know the only time when you're speaking and moving in salah uh, uh, it's like when uh, f uh, f when when uh, you're standing up and when you say the holy law. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the only place from when you're getting up and say beholy uh, beholy law, and then you're getting up, and that's the only place where you stand uh, when you're moving and speaking in salah. Yeah. So uh, we need to know these rules, and we need to treat salah with respect and establish it. Yeah. So on the day of judgment, it doesn't turn back on us. Yeah, we want salah on our side. We want it on the side of our good deeds, not the side, not the side where, um, where, where the salah is actually against us. We're saying that you haven't done this, you haven't done this. Yeah. 
so this is really important. Mohsen, you've got the next thing. So can we start Mohsen off with the last salawat? Allah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farjahum. The most important thing that we must remember is that our salah involves our whole being. It involves our body, our mind, our soul. So before performing our salah, we must take sure that our bodies are virtually clean, our intentions are pure and our hearts are sincere. During salah, we should not we should not utter oh, we should not only utter the words with our tongue but we should also realize what we're saying with our mind and that we should feel it deeply within our heart we must close our eyes to this world and open them towards our creator we must let go of all the little things in our life and focus completely on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course we to do all of this is not easy, but we must try as much as we can and inshallah uh, through practice and patience we may be able to re- to turn our prayers into something very special indeed. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajo. Thank you Mohsin. So, um, mostly mentioned some important points here. Yeah. So when we're reading the Quran, what's happening? When we're reading the Quran, <laughs> Mosin. Um, like Allah, Allah speaking to you, yes. telling you what yeah, happened. that's really important. So the Quran is the words of you, Allah. Allah subhanahu wa taala. Yeah. So when, when we're reading the Quran, it's Allah that's talking to you, to you, to us. Yeah. Yeah. Allah's talking to us. When we're mm-hmm. doing salah, we're talking, we're talking, to, talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah? So we need this connection, yeah? Salah and Quran, yeah? We need this correction, uh, connection. We read the Quran and we get the wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do salah, we talk to Allah, we establish this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where it's so strong, you're so used to it, you get this habit that you do salah every day, this connection, so hard to break, yeah? And so you, so you've got this constant acknowledgement in your, uh, in your mind that you're remembering Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, yeah. And then you don't want to do these bad things because you know Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is watching you, and you've got this remembrance in your heart and in your mind of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, yeah. So um, th- this is important. So we get the wisdom from the Quran, yeah, and the um, example from the Ahlul Bayt, yeah, and. Then we talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and establish this connection yeah, where it's so strong that it can't break. Yeah? So these are some of the important things as well. And also, just to mention, with respecting Salah, yeah, like Hussein said before, we're not t- talking to anyone, we're talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know how um, you have, uh, even if you meet the Queen, yeah. yeah there's, they'll give you a whole list of things They'll give you a whole list of paper of things Which you are not allowed to do in the presence of the Queen And how you're supposed to act in the presence of the Queen Isn't it? Yeah Because um, she's, um, she's someone that, you, that um, for, th- for this country and for its people What do you have to do? You have to give respect to her, don't you? Yeah If they're giving you this whole list Of things that you're not allowed to do in the presence of the Queen And things you have to do in the presence of the Queen Yeah She's the Queen She's a human. What about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yeah? Shouldn't we think about that? Yeah? So this is why we need to learn these rules of salah. Yeah? And we need to practice these as well. And some people think that, oh, I'm, I'm not wajib yet. I'm not wajib yet. I don't, I, don't, I don't need to learn about salah. When I'm wajib, I'll learn, I'll do it. Yeah? This is a really um, kind of... A bad mistake and people actually use the solar calendar because what's the islam calendar is the lunar, lunar calendar. yeah lunar calendar so when you're 14 in the um so uh, p- people think um so i think the age of wajib uh, for a girl to be wajib is what nine nine yeah and for a boy it's what 14 14, 14. that's when they get barlig and have to do namaz yeah but 
in the solar calendar you might um, you might be 13 yeah but in the lunar calendar what are you 14 14 mm -hmm. possibly you're 14 yeah depending on the dates yeah and when you've turned 14 in the solar calendar you probably possibly missed a year of salah that's a possibility yeah depending on your dates yeah of your of your birth yeah so um, this is why it's important before your balik to learn to learn um, how to do salah how to perform it um, the pronunciation that you have to do of the surahs the sur surah alhamd you can't believe it how how much people read it today some people still read it wrong yeah so uh, we need to learn these things and then when we are balik and when it's wajib upon us then we already know this and it's already become a habit for us because we've already been doing it yeah so these are important things that we need to know so misbah you've got the last thing so we can start misbah after the last salawat Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad wa ala muhammad wa ala Prayers can't be answered unless they are prayed. Life without purpose is barren indeed. There can't be a harvest unless you plant seed. There can't be attainment unless there's a goal. And man's but a robust unless there's a soul. If we send no ships out, no ships will come in. And unless there's a contest, nobody can win. For games can't be won unless they are played. And prayers can't be answered unless they are prayed. So whatever is wrong is wrong with your life today, you'll find a solution if you kneel down and pray. Not just for pleasure, enjoyment and health, not just for honours and prestige and wealth, but pray for a purpose to make life worth living and pray for the joy of unselfish, unselfish giving. For great is your gladness and rich your reward when you make your life's purpose at the choice of the Lord. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil Um, Thank you for that Misbah. So Misbah was there so, uh, giving a little what? Uh, the poem oh. and really um, kind of sums up what we've been talking about and how we should actually um, gain Salah and do it. Yeah. So, um, so th these are um, important things aren't they? Yeah. So, uh, what have we learned today? We've uh, learned the importance of um, salah and um, what um, what prayers we do, yeah, and um, and why we should do it, and um, not just utter the words, but like mean it. Yeah, mean it. Yeah. So, um, important thing as well to learn is the um, the um, translation. So, if you don't know Arabic, learn the translation of the surah that you're reading in. Um, um, in nam in namaz in salah, yeah. So um, whenever the um, um, someone is in front of you, the leader of namaz, they reciting the 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 namaz, yeah. Uh, so so you know the meaning of this, and this is really important. And if you know the meaning, it gives a whole kind of level to your salah, yeah. Mm. Because when you don't know the meaning, yeah, you want to do it quick, you want to get it overdone, you, you don't understand the the beauty of it, yeah. And when you actually know the meaning, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, all and and in your mind is the meaning. All praise is due to Allah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Lord of the Universe. Maliki, mm -hmm. do any of you know the translation Maliki Yomidin? Do any of you know what I mean? Uh, 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 is it? Uh, uh, the most kind of most merciful, master of the day of judgment. Yeah, yeah, master. So Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, mm -hmm. the. Uh, um, Master of the day of No, no, Ar Rahman Rahim, the the most. Uh, so, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. That is all praise due to Allah, the Lord of the universe. Um, the most kind, the most Yeah, the most kind, the most merciful. Maliki Yomidin, that's um, or a king, um, king or um, yeah, owner of the day of judgment. Yeah. So, so we need to know these translations, don't we? So, um, whenever the person is saying it, we, we go over the translations in our head. So, um, in this series what we're going to be talking about so we're all um today we're going to be uh, we just established the importance of salah and why we actually do salah and and how we should actually respect salah as well but um uh, throughout this series what we're going to be talking about how how to do salah this is the main thing as well the rules of salah and what we should do before salah as well what should we do before salah uh, wuzu. wuzu yeah and just talking about salah in general 
Yeah. So, uh, do any of you know um, the the five that we're supposed to be doing? Um, uh, f uh, Fajr, Zoha, and what's the Ruka? Um, Fajr is to Ruka, Zoha is for Ruka, Asr. Asr is for yeah, for yeah. Is three yeah, Isha, yes. So, um, we need to know these things, and also, what else? An important thing as well, some sh um, the Shia. Yeah, what they get, get criticized on is the combination of Salah. So, um, they, have any of you, um, so this is probably the answer, yes. Have any of you been to uh, Juma? Yeah? And um, is where um, everyone's together, they're all praying together, yeah? Um, something that, uh, don't you recognize when, okay, okay the first, first, um, first Namaz is done. Yeah, so say you do, um, it's Zohar, Zohar time, yeah? So Zohar, you finish Zohar, yeah, and then the um, the man who's reading Salah, they stand up again, and what do they recite the? Uh, Akama. Uh, Akama, yeah. Yeah, Akama to start the next Salah, yeah. 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 So there's there's this combination with Salah, isn't there? That uh, Fajr you do it at Fajr time, and then Zohar time you do Zohar and Asr, yeah. Uh, at at Maghrib time you do Maghrib and Isha, yeah. So there's this combination, yeah, with the prayers, and um, some of the other Muslims, what do they, they criticize us on this fact, why we do this, and inshallah we'll talk about this in the next couple of episodes, um, so we've run out of time for this, uh, uh, this show, so we'll see you next week, talking a little bit about more, the importance of Salah, um, so we'll see you next week, same time, same place, on Hadayat TV, but until then, good office.